Welcome to the first episode of Series 48, everyone. This series is going to sweep you off your feet as we create characters for Kids on Brooms. No. But before we get to that, <laughs> first, some announcements. No. And first announcement, no. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't read that closer before we started. It was oh, an I'm orange, so mad. So. <laughs> I'm so mad. All right, announcements. Now that I'm done being mad at Ryan. <laughs> Did you check out the Spotlight episode last week? Well, keep an eye out for the Deimos Academy Kickstarter that should be starting later this week. If you haven't heard the episode yet, absolutely check that one out because the game is pretty fantastic and Ryan had a lot of fun creating characters in a spooky boarding school with our guests. Mm-hmm. I unfortunately was ill yes. and was not able to do anything. Uh, so, you I know, think you would have enjoyed it. Yeah. Illness. <laughs> I know. Boo. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun, uh, so I can't wait for uh, that game to come out. And uh, if you have not checked out the, the episode yet, definitely check that out. Yeah, it sounded like you had a lot of fun. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what that game Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Um, another thing you can check out is the uh, TTRPG bundle for Trans Rights Texas on Itch. There are well over 400 games included in this bundle, including my very own game, Our Final Gathering, The Dreaded Reflections of the Immortal Soul. Uh, we covered that game on a Patreon exclusive episode, if you want to hear what it's all about. Uh, but this bundle is only $5 uh, minimum, so it's it's going to such a good cause. So definitely check it out. Help some folks out. And if you can, uh, give more than $5 uh, because it is well worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, $5 for 400 games is obscene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so much. That's so, so many games. Speaking of Patreon exclusives and helping people out, we also have a network Patreon that helps our show and all of the other shows on the network at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. You can get bonus episodes for various shows on the network or even rewards like a free RPG every month. Uh, But honestly, if you have a few dollars to spare right now and are debating on where you should go, probably check out the TTRPG bundle mentioned right before this um, and then consider backing the Patreon if you have a little more to spare. Mm -hmm. Uh, And one last announcement before we go. Uh, We we have a TikTok page now. What? We're on the Tiki Tuckies. On the TikToks. (laughs) We're on the TikTok. Uh, So yeah, we we're really only hosting our teasers for upcoming episodes there. So they're going to be all in one nice little spot. Uh, Will we use it for anything else? i not really sure. Uh, but once we learn how, once once we learn how, maybe <laughs> <laughs> we're old. I'm sorry. It's, you know, like it may be the thing that finally makes me get TikTok. Part mm-hmm. of me has been like, <laughs> you have ADHD. You don't do that to yourself. <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe this will be the thing that if like you stay forces off of, my hand. If you stay off the TikTok and just make TikToks, then you're good. Right. I think you have to be on the TikTok to make the TikToks. You're probably right. <laughs> See, this is how little Ryan knows. <laughs> exactly. But you can follow us at Character Creation Cast, all one word, on TikTok and like our stuff. Woo! That is it for announcements for today. Actually, you know what? I thought of one more, real Ooh. quick. Real quick, one more. Yes. Um, I was incorrect about my daughter's Girl Scout cookie sales. Her Ooh. leaders did not give us an end date, and so I assumed that the end date was the same as in-person sales, but it's not. So if you want Girl Scout cookies, it goes through the end of March. Um, so we will put a link in the show notes if you need some cookies and would like to support Eleanor. Um, it is bit.ly slash Eleanor cookie because they gave us a really long URL and I made my own. (laughs) Um, Otherwise, if you are interested in supporting local troops, you can probably find a girl near you that still has a website up or uh, most of them are doing cookie booths at grocery stores Mm. right now through the month of March. So um, if you don't have a Girl Scout, you are welcome to borrow mine. But if you do, please find them and order some. Yeah, I already got uh, two batches of, of boxes of cookies. Yeah, I uh, might Eleanor. have ordered like 20 boxes. Yeah, I think it's, we're around that gross. much too. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, you know what? But as I eat them, I'm not sorry. Yeah, and they last forever in the freezer. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah. 
Okay, so that, all of that is it for announcements for today. Uh, stick around after the show for our call to action, including a new review. A new review. Oh, I didn't read that before. That's very exciting. Oh, I can't wait till after the episode. In the meantime, enjoy the show. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome Doug Lewandowski and Jonathan Gilmore, designers of the game we're covering this series, Kids on Brooms. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. We're really excited that you both are here. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm, well, we're excited to be I'm here. so excited about this. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Thank you so much for having us. Um, Doug, we'll start with you. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Um, any projects that you have going on? Where people can find you online? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am Doug Lovendowski. I'm a high school English teacher and then part-time game designer. Uh, also full-time father. Um out of New Jersey. I'm on Twitter at Doug Lewandowski because I'm, you know, trying to keep it simple. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Easy, easy to easy remember. remember. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> uh, currently, John and a bunch of other folks and I are working on Kids in Capes, um, which is the Ooh. fourth in the Kids On line. We did some live streaming of that over the summer uh, to start that design process, and we're continuing work on that. Uh, John and I are also working on a secret project that should be announced soon in the kids online. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, well, let me look over at my active projects on my whiteboard here. It's the only way I remember <laughs> things. Um, oh yeah. The other big project that I'm working on right now is, uh, home with Yun Soo Kim, uh, which is a game using uh, this, uh, using the quiet ear as an engine about surviving the night in a haunted house. Oh. That sounds mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really nice. happy with it, how it is coming out. Uh, and there's actually John's advice to uh, look into using a hack of the, the quiet year to make it work. So, yeah, absolutely. That sounds really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then, John, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, so I'm Jonathan Gilmore. I am a uh, full time game designer and part time English teacher. It's not really. I just wanted to. <laughs> uh, that would have been great, though. <laughs> I think uh, you should pick up a job just so that you can continue making that joke. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> It'll make all these podcasts better if I can actually carry it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at John Gilmore, J O N G I L M O U R. And uh, I'm working on a bunch of stuff. So the secret project with Dud, another secret project with Dud that we're just kind of starting some stuff about that we're real excited <laughs> for. <laughs> Um, I just had a game called Collab on Kickstarter, which is about being down on your luck, mad scientists that have to share a co-working space, hence Collab. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, that it's a lot like of fun. So much fun. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> and the art is so good on it. Like, I'm so excited um, for it. It's, it's a great game. That sounds amazing. So yeah, staying busy with that stuff. Very cool. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get into this and we'll start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. So what is the core concept of Kids on Brooms? Yeah, the main idea is that you are uh, folks at a wizarding school. You're either new students, uh, more experienced students or faculty there. And you are trying to make sense of the world around you as you learn about magic and figure out how to use it and then navigate whatever complications the GM is flinging in your direction. Very cool. Uh, And... uh, is that, um, I, I know this is like the third of the series of the Kids On series, and we'll get into that in the, a little bit in the history, uh, but that, that seems it, the same sort of formula as the previous games uh, in terms of world building character creation. Yeah, we, we tried to carry a fair amount of things over from game to game, but we also wanted to try to innovate with this one. 
um, and with Teens in Space. So each one we try to, you know, make it different enough. So this one introduces the magic system, but character creation and world building um, has some tweaks for sure, but, you know, it's overall the same. Very cool. What kind of setting are we playing in? Is this like, you know, like a magic school in the real world? Is this like a place where the whole world is magical? Is this, you know, kind of whatever you want? Yep, one hundred percent up to the players. So that's part cool. of the part of the the questions that you ask at the start, and that you think about in terms of what kind of game you want to play. Right? Mm-hmm. Is this somewhere where magic is widely accepted, and people who are magical get to go to school, or is it a place where magic is kept super duper secret, and you know you sort of sneak your way into school every day or stay there? Very cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, so, what sort of tools do we need to play this game then? Uh, six dice. Oh, okay. Um, and the book, uh, and the character sheet probably doesn't hurt either, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you need a, a full set of polyhedral dice and you're good to go pretty much. All right. Yeah. And that, that kind of came from the, uh, original kids on bites when Doug and I were working on it, you know, uh, stranger things had just come out. So we were discussing how to, you know, kind of incorporate the feel of classic D and D into it. So, oh, yeah. um, Doug suggested we put Thacko in the game. It's a really bad idea. Yeah. And then uh, you were like, Doug, I still want to be friends later, so maybe not. Yeah. And after, I was 100% serious about that. It's important that I, <laughs> that I'm honest about that. After I came out of my stupor from hearing that, um, <laughs> we discussed further and came up with this idea. Mm-hmm. 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 I like that. I feel like a lot of um, sort of modern games and indie games really kind of skew that like full set of polyhedrals. And I'm... I know that each game has its reasons for picking the kind of dice that it does, you know, so I don't want to say like, I don't know why that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting that it's sort of a trend overall that all of these games have made that choice to not do that. So seeing that full set in a, in a more modern game is kind of, um, I don't want to say surprising, but it's, it's interesting, certainly, and certainly different from a lot of stuff that we see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah we knew- we were- oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Jen. No, you go. I mean, we knew they were we knew that it was super fun to play with dice and we we just thought it would be so cool to use them in a different way yeah mm-hmm. um and so the way we use them in here is that your six stats are represented by the dice and the bigger the die is the more uh powerful that stat is so cool. if your d20 is in grit you know you're you're extra tough and if your d4 is in flight you're not that quick um, right and originally we had it so that, uh, you know, the names are sort of juxtaposed against each other for some of them, like fight and flight or uh, charm and grit, brains, brawn. And initially we were thinking that whatever your D20 was, the other one would necessarily be the D4. And then whatever oh, your yeah. D12 was, it would be the D6. Mm. Um, but then we realized that was just way too limiting and that um, that sort of like opposing binary thing sort of fell by the wayside as we as we kept working yeah mm-hmm. it really kind of forces you to min max which you know some people love but some people really don't right yeah yep yeah and the other the other thing is that the dice explodes so the the smaller dice can actually have huge successes because oh, like a d4 yeah. has a 25 percent chance of exploding right right yeah oh, it makes yeah. it really swinging you that way too mm-hmm. which yeah, size, I, I like i like games that have a lot of kind of like swing in them but. yeah yeah, we wanted those like big moments where you did something that didn't seem like a good idea and it was successful because mm-hmm. we felt like that was super you know, indicative of like the kids on bites genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Those moments where it's like there's no way that this is going to work, but like everything goes exactly right. And then you somehow pull it out. Yeah, because right. because your kids going up against insurmountable odds and, and somehow come away unscathed. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I, I love exploding dice, too. Uh, I do it's, too. Just so it's just so satisfying. Like, oh, mm-hmm. It feels really good, doesn't it? It just feels really good. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I rolled max on the dice. Uh, in normal games, it's just like, uh, good good on you. Great job. And, and with exploding games, it's just like, okay, roll it again. Do it again. And, and, and maybe you'll get to roll even more. I right. think I have a screenshot somewhere of like an online game that I was playing where it just kept like, it was like four or five times. And I like took a screen cap of it and saved it for posterity. <laughs> yeah. Like, look at my one amazing roll. And I think it was to run away. Um, <laughs> it was like, to 
they're like, what are you doing? I was like, well, obviously I would run away. I don't have any weapons. I don't have it. Like we run away. And I yeah. ran so good. <laughs> you just left like the dust cloud behind you. Like it was like the, like the biggest waste of all of those exploding yep. tires. But it was <laughs> so great. It was like, that's, and that is a true Amelia story. Yeah. Like, well, that's, that's your roadrunner moment. Right, right. right. <laughs> Um, we really like to talk to people too, especially about what kind of stories and themes these games are meant to explore. We know that when we sit down at a table, obviously you are not coming to my game every time to tell me how to play or what kind of story to tell. Um, but certainly when you design a game, there are things that you kind of put to the forefront. Um, so what kind of stories and themes were you hoping people would kind of explore in these games? I think the two biggest ones for me are I want people to explore those relationships between characters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the character creation is built around forming those relationships and asking those questions and delving into that. And I think that emotional core of all of those stories is what I think interests us the most, right? Like the big, the big moments where they take out a Demogorgon with a slingshot or, well, sort of. Um, or, you know, the, there's a big lightsaber battle or like, you know, they, they stand off against this unbeatable evil wizard and somehow manage to come out. Like those are cool and all, but like what drives it and what creates the stakes for all of those is the way that, you know, uh, rocket looks at Groot when the ship is crashing and, and Groot's decided to sacrifice himself, right? The, mm -hmm. those are cool moments, but they mean nothing if you're like, Oh, okay. Like character A is done now. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big part. And then the other part is thinking about ways to be more creative and problem solving than I smash it in the face with a sword, which like is super fun sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. Like, and you want some resolutions like that for sure. But, you know, doing more than just rolling for damage and rolling for all that stuff, which I mean, like I said, it's is great in its own place, right? But I'm really interested in those stories where it looks like there's about to be a fight and they figure out a way to sweet talk their way out of it. Or, you know, they explode five times on a, on a run. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the bully takes a swing at the cloud of dust that you've left behind. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I think um, we, we wanted to really be able to allow people to play a wide berth of genres too, because that's, that's a big hallmark of Kids on Bites when we started having these discussions. Because it can go from like action, like Goonies, to sci-fi, like Paper Girls, you know, to horror, to really anything. So we didn't want to, you know, shoehorn people into like one genre. You know, you could do Monster of the Week with like a Scooby-Doo type game. Mm -hmm. um, and we really wanted to open it up and make a system that, you know, really was generous in the world creation. So you could do any of those things with the same rule mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, so when you, when you create your world what, and your characters, what, what do characters do in this game specifically in Kids on Brooms? Yeah, so one of the big differences is there is a sort of built-in, um, unlike Kids on Bikes, there is sort of a built-in, not leveling up, but character improvement thing here with the class schedule. Whereas mm -hmm. you're practicing these kinds of magic, you're getting progressively better and better at them. Um, so we wanted that to be part of it because this is so focused on the school setting um, that there had to be that sort of learning educational progression thing going on. Um, but on a more basic level, you're going on these adventures, you're getting acclimated to this school that, you know, probably for many of the characters is unlike anything they've ever seen before you know, where the the rules that most of the ways that people have chosen to play it is, you know, the rules that people think about reality are now malleable. Uh, mm. And so what does that do to the world around you? How do you explore it? How do you find your place in that sort of upended world? Absolutely. As, as kids, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we always like to ask designers, especially, um, what do you think makes this game unique and especially i kind of like to talk about it in um sorry in the view of what made you feel like this was a game that you needed to put into the world um why you know like w why this kind of magical school game instead of you know making a 5e e hack or you know <laughs> <laughs> if you want i mean why couldn't you just use gerps and <laughs> 
I mean, for me, part of it was that I used to love big, chunty, rules-heavy RPGs, but I just don't have time to play them anymore. Mm -hmm. So, Mm. you know, that was one of the things is we really wanted to, you know, have a thing that you could play as a one-shot or as a campaign in like two-hour-ish sessions that were nice and tight um, and had a really good arc. Um, And the other thing was that I was on a panel and it was called... um, breaking into RPGs. And, it, and I thought like f- from the name that it was going to be like how to become an RPG designer. And mm-hmm. this was before Kids on Bytes was out. And I was like, I'm underqualified for this because, you know, my <laughs> RPG is not even out yet. Um, but it ended up being like 300 people in a room. And the panel was about how to learn how to play RPGs. Oh. And mm, that really Something resonated that with... that just like hurts me a little bit. That mm-hmm. like, oh... Well, like, it why really is it so res- hard? Yeah, well, it resonated with me that, like, D&D as a rule book is the worst rule book ever. Like, yes, I, thank you. <laughs> I, I struggled with it because I didn't have anybody that played D&D around me when I grew up, but I bought the books and tried to teach myself and had no idea how to actually play the game. I was like, mm-hmm. here's the rules that tell me you know, how to do checks, but, like, I didn't know how to DM. I didn't know anything else, and I didn't know how to role play, really. So we wanted to use the character creation to ease people into the role playing inherently without them having to like read a how to role play section. So, you know, doing things like asking them questions in character, you know, trying to get them used to speaking as their character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which honestly is like one of the things that we spend a lot of time exploring on this podcast too, is, you know, how character creation is the first like step into any game. It's that first like, toe in the pool and so you know how does that process tell you what playing the game is going to be like how does it introduce you and in a lot of games it doesn't mm-hmm. you know and it's like D is one of those games like making characters tells you nothing about what playing the game is going to be like mm-hmm. um it doesn't aside sort of from like, you're going to have a lot of things to roll and mm-hmm. combat's heavily important right in... yeah you have weapons um <laughs> yeah and it's it's interesting how many games don't do that especially given the fact that when you talk to a lot of people their intro to role-playing games is like oh i found this book in my uncle's attic and i just like made a bunch of characters and then i didn't know what to do with them Mm -hmm. um and then they go on to like make games where character creation doesn't have anything to do with playing the game and i just find that interesting that Mm -hmm. like we don't connect those things very often Mm -hmm. yeah another big thing for me is the the flexibility right that a lot of games have a very specific here's your setting here's what happens Mm -hmm. um where people are sort of told this is the kind of world you're in and Mm -hmm. you know with kids on bikes teens in space kids on brooms it's i don't know what world do you want to be in right yeah yeah um and leaving that flexibility for folks i think is one thing that that sets this apart also the the magic system we have in here um i'm really really proud of of what John Spencer and I did with that for Mm -hmm. um, just the sort of streamlining of how do you cast a spell? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that sets it apart from, from a lot of other stuff. Oh, very cool. I I am excited to learn that. We spent so much time having those discussions about like, do we have like spell books? Do we have all this other stuff? And yeah, we just kind of landed on like players really should be able to do anything with magic because that's fun and it should be, Mm -hmm really fast and fun to do. And, you know, kind of my design philosophy is always like have the players doing the fun stuff as much as possible. So, right. yeah, you know, we just really leaned into that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. Because I think in a lot of games, um, it, magic is one of those things that for some reason is it's difficult to make it not feel clunky. Mm-hmm. And um, and a lot of times it as somebody who likes to play magic characters in lots of games, it mm-hmm. it really slows things down sometimes to be like, okay, this lasts for three rounds and I need these components and it right. takes four rounds to summon the mm-hmm. thing. And like, and I can only do this three times a day. Like, no. Right. But and is that a concentration one or is that? Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Can I do another thing at the same time or no? Right. Um, and it's, and how yeah, big it is your component pouch? being fun after a little bit like it's you know like i just want to do something cool can you please just let me do the cool thing Mm -hmm. i can 
do math and count how many onions I have in my kitchen. I don't want to like do that in this game too. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is the part where we generally talk about the history of the game uh, or history of the series in this case. Um, but I was curious, uh, when did you start working on Kids on Brooms? It was the year that the first season of Stranger Things came out. I was like, going to say three days after Stranger Things came out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe even quicker. It might have been the day. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But Doug had posted on Facebook, like, yo, who wants to work on a Stranger Things board game? And I sent him a message immediately. I was like, hey, Doug, uh, I'm already working on a Stranger Things board game. Uh, <laughs> how about we do an RPG? And he was like, oh, that sounds great. And then, uh, you know, we just kind of went from there. And the Stranger Things board game ended up being a Tits on Bites board game <laughs> several years later. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, uh, what, back in uh, 2016, 17, give or take? 15 or 16, sometime around that. Oh, yeah. wow. T time has no meaning anymore. Is it anymore. really that long ago? <laughs> it, so it, long. Was, it was 2016 because I remember <sighs> writing while I was watching the Summer Olympics. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then Kids on Bikes uh, kickstarted in November of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, successfully, of course. Um, and then Teens in Space, the, the first announcement I saw was in 2019. Uh, I'm assuming that work began on that at some point after Kids on Bike was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then Kids on Brooms is now, uh, now out and about as well. Yeah. So that one was, uh, we were talking to, uh, Scott from Renegade and Ivan from Hunters about, you know, next steps as we were wrapping, getting close to wrapping up teens in space. Um, and they said, so what are you going to do next? We said, well, we have a couple ideas. We could do this. We could do that. Scott said, yeah, you know, the cool thing about this is like, it's so like the names are so evocative that like, once you have it, like this, the game sort of like not rights itself, but like the concept mm. is just there yeah. just from the name. He said, you know, like, like, you know, kids on brooms or whatever. And we're like, yeah, that's our next one. Sounds great. Yep. <laughs> he was like, no, 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 you don't have to like, just cause I'm like president of Renegade, you don't have to do what I say. We're like, no, 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 no. Like that's a great name. It's too uh, late. You said it. It's great. out there. <laughs> we love it. We're there. <laughs> and then a couple weeks later, uh, we got contacted on Twitter by Spencer who had done a hack of kids on bikes at a convention. Um, called kids on brooms and was like you know i just thought this would be cool just wanted to share this with you guys um we we're like well how about <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah uh, working with him was just fantastic he's such a he's so great um, absolutely was there always an intention to make this like a whole series or was it like partway through making kids on bikes you were like there's there's so much more i can do or no i think I think Doug and I were probably expecting, so um, it was, a, it's a, a lot of weird happenstance. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we were going to- As these to, things often are. <laughs> yeah, every, every time. Um, we were going to self-publish it. We were just mm -hmm. going to do the Kickstarter stuff. We, you know, we expected to maybe sell like a couple hundred copies to our, to our friends and be happy with it. And um, at Gen Con, I randomly ran into Ivan Van Norman, um, who I knew online, but I'd never met in person. I was like, hey, I just I want to say hi, um, as we're both like walking hurriedly to meetings. And he's like, oh, what are you working on? And, you know, I showed him the cover because, uh, you know, we were already doing, had Heather doing art for it. Mm. Um, and I showed him the cover and, you know, gave him like the quick rundown. And he was like, don't show this to anyone else, this convention, and let's have a meeting as soon as it's over. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was like, great, because the last thing Doug and I want to do was self-publish it. But oh, we, like, we didn't yeah. want to like spend a lot of time pitching it to publishers, and neither of us are really in the RPG world, so I don't know mm -hmm. RPG publishers as well as I know like board game publishers. Mm -hmm. So it just happened, and then we had that meeting with um, Ivan and Chris and you know, they were on board and they kind of took over running the kit starter um, mm -hmm. and, you know, doing all that and getting some of the guests, uh, to, you know, together for stretch goals. And then I think after the kit starter did really well, we heard that Renegade was coming out as a partner. Mm. Um, and then I think like the next year we won the Enya award, right, Doug? 
Yeah, uh, for best family game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 20, 2017, 2018. 2018, yeah. 2018, yeah. Yeah, so we were like, well, you know, we should definitely talk about next steps and doing more stuff with this at that point. Because mm -hmm. And the Chase Starter way outperformed what we were expecting. I think we did like 125,000 or 140. Yeah. Yeah, for the time, pretty good for an RPG. Um, yeah. And it, it it's nice that you set yourselves up, too, with, like, such a, a malleable system with uh, with regards to setting and tone and all that sort of stuff with kids on bikes that you can easily mold into these other genres mm -hmm. and add some more specific rules to the specific genres and stuff like that. that mm -hmm. that's uh, That was really cool. Yeah, and it's worked out real well with players, too, because it made it nice that they can, like, start a Kids on Bytes game and just transition into the different systems. Mm -hmm. Oh. And we've now had, I you know, want to oh. do that. Mm -hmm. I want a chain campaign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, start with Kids on Bikes, go into Kids on Brooms, Teens in Space. Yep. Yeah. One of my favorite experiences was at a smaller convention in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, Banana Chan was running a dads on brooms charity event and i was running the teens in space charity event and it was like a like a four hour learn to play play a one shot um mm -hmm. charity event and you know we broke so everybody could go get lunch and uh, banana and i talked and we we're like would it be cool if i crash landed the teens in space into the middle of your game <laughs> <laughs> and we put them all together at a table. So like oh. when they got back from lunch, I was like, everybody was getting ready to sit down. I was like, nope, we're going over to that table. And then I narrated the crash landing on the planet and I'd set it up like right before lunch. Um, and then we combined the two games and it was so fun. That's oh, amazing. Wow. That, that, those experiences are so memorable when, when you've got multiple tables that you just combine together and, and it just works. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. And it sounds like you're still working on, on more. So there's, you know, hopefully uh -huh. more cool things to come. Yeah. yeah we're real, next, okay. Will everyone keep getting older? Because we've got kids and then we've got teens. <laughs> Are we going to have like adults in grocery stores? Young adult. Uh, I'll adults be honest. paying taxes. <laughs> we learned our lesson from teens in space. Uh, if that ever gets re-released, it'll be kids in space for sure. Oh, um, okay. oh there you go. Hey, <laughs> that was a a tough transition you know like the the sort of we name thought the name sounded better yeah but we learned that people didn't recognize it as a kids on bikes game oh, right. okay mm -hmm. right okay. um so the so the next one uh well the next one is the secret one uh that definitely starts with kids um but kids in capes is uh the one that is still in you know the earlier stages of work um and that's a superhero game um mm -hmm. Where which which you... Doug told me we were not going to do a superhero game when I first approached him. He's like, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> masks, absolutely not. Masks and I said, exist, and I'm not interested in doing a superhero game. And I said we were going to do Thacko, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John's usually right. Um, oh no, no, that's not my point. But I think it's fun that I <laughs> I sold him on it because I was watching Star Girl with my mm -hmm. kids, and I was like, Doug, you need to watch Star Girl because it is a kids on bite superhero show. And right. you watch like the first four episodes in the city. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're doing kids and tapes now. Right. And the, the thing that separates that is, you know, it, a lot of the games focus on the characters when they are already heroes, right? Mm -hmm. When they, you know, we're already a team. We've already had these adventures or the plan is we're going to start out together and then keep going. Kids and capes, uh, at least as we're envisioning it now, is about shorter arcs about the team just starting out. Oh, um, okay. And, you know, of course, people can sort of bend things and, and keep going. But in the the rules as written as we're envisioning now, there is an end point for your character uh, in the campaign. Not, you know, every character dies at the end of it or anything like that. But at mm -hmm. a certain point when you're, when you fully embraced and fully understood your powers, good game, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Which I like. I like when games have an end point because I think a lot of times we're kind of left hanging. It's mm -hmm. like it's, you know, a beginning and a middle and a middle and a middle and mm -hmm. a middle. <laughs> and then like we there's no resolution. <laughs> so like uh -huh. knowing that a campaign has an end point is, is sometimes really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still holding out for moms in Target, though. 
<laughs> well, and that, I mean, that's nice is the adventures that we did, like Banana did Dads on Mowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which is such a good, uh, <laughs> so good setting. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what you're saying is I can write my hack of Moms in Target. Oh, please do. Right. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if I can find the time. But... <laughs> Um, before we dive into the actual official real character creation part, uh, are there any terms or concepts you feel like people need to know to really be able to follow along? It's okay if the answer is no, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, we tried to stay away from specific language sure. that people had to learn. Like, we wanted to try to use, I mean, besides the different stats, like charm, flight, grit, brains, brawn, and fight, I don't think mm-hmm. there's much else. Yeah, but those are kind of like, call it what it is. Yeah. feels like, mm-hmm. you know, you don't need to explain what grit is or fight. Yeah, <laughs> right. So fight is fighting or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can definitely get into that uh, during character creation. And, and uh, uh, it should be pretty easy because it, it feels like uh, the whole crux of uh, the kids uh, series is uh, make it easier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, sh- shall we shall we make some people then? Let's make some people. Yeah, let's make some people. Let's make some people. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Yeah. All right. So, kids on brooms. I now have a character sheet and the book. And what is the first thing that we need to do to make our characters? First thing we do is we build the world. Oh, oh yes. Let's make a oh, place. Ryan doesn't like world building, actually. <laughs> That's not true at all. I heard him say... <laughs> and, and I actually, Slander. I actually lied. Um, the, the first thing we do is we set any boundaries that we want to include here. Oh, um, yes. Oh, yes. That is good. I'm a real, real big fan of lines and veils um, mm-hmm. as just a, as a way to sort of set stuff up. So I guess that is one term people would need to be familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, should yes, we explain we have... for the listeners or do they know? Is that something you use a lot on here? It is something we use a lot. We also do have, is it episode, mm, character there's a, there's guys, episode a safety seven? safety episode that we did. Yeah, okay. um, episode seven that is all about safety tools yep. and things like that. Oh, great. So, um, yeah. yes, I mean, like we can say real quick, lines are things that are hard nose for us. Veils are things that it's okay if we kind of discuss, but we want to not, you know, usually it's, it's things not going like detail, romance and things like it. that, like, you know, fade to black. Right. So, mm-hmm. But for more information, see character evolution cast episode seven. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I don't have any like big lines or veils that are outside of the norm. Um, so like uh, pretty much everything's fair game, obviously. Uh, we're not going to get into actually playing the game, so mm-hmm. don't have to worry too much about like uh, harm to kids or or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, it really, just the a lot of the 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 basic like decency yeah. knows, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it should be fine. Is there anything on your end, uh, Doug and John? Um, I think that's a fair. I think mean, that's a fine baseline for me for this sense. We won't be getting into playing too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's just be decent people. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, I think my my one usual caveat of like, you can describe violence. Do not tell me what sound it makes. Um, mm-hmm. Probably mm. shouldn't come up. <laughs> shouldn't right. be a yep. big deal in character creation. But, you know, that's, yeah. my, that's always I, my, I one, say, my one caveat. Don't tell me how it sounds. <laughs> uh, we, we keep it PG because uh, we're a okay. uh, family friendly show. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And, and we should be good. If, if it can make it into a PG movie. Of today's time, I know PG movies of the 80s are a little different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but also, to be fair, Star Wars is PG-13, so. That's very true. Just saying. That's true. All okay. right. Okay, uh, world so, building, Ryan's world least building. favorite. <laughs> you keep saying that. Those words don't mean what you think they mean. <laughs> um. Okay, yeah, so what do we do to build a world? Let's, Let's make, make a place. place. So we have a, a series of questions that... Uh, we'll answer it around the table. Um, mm-hmm. We can talk about our answers, but whoever is the sort of active player is the one who gets to make the decision about that. Okay. Um, and this will be on page five of the PDF. Yeah. And in that process, we'll sort of naturally establish tone, right? You know, like if, uh, you know, our school winds up being called 
Thurmber McBlurmber's mm-hmm. magical mess. You know, we yes, know what kind of game we're playing. magical hoodlums. Right. Versus like <laughs> Grim Dark Academy of Horror. You know, we know we're, we're doing something yeah. very, very different. Uh, yeah, one of those is Ryan's school and one of those is my school. <laughs> Pretty much. It's just a school for necromancers, right? Right. Yes. Yep. And we're all um, emo kids. Mm-hmm. Just trying to keep See, the now, romance now and necromancy. Now you've activated our trap cards of magical girls and necromancers. Yes, this um, is the theme that we build all characters around. Magical girls and necromancers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that I, that's the first thing in the uh, collaborative creation is de- deciding on the uh, tone we want to take. So maybe we should discuss mm-hmm. that. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we tend to get goofy regardless of how serious we get. Yeah. There's, there's always something that ends up being a little bit goofy. Right. I like, um, I like Doofy, and I've already named my character Doofy Names, so. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you named your character? We haven't even started yet. <laughs> uh, I started filling out my character sheet because I thought of a name, is, so I wrote it down. What is, what is this? What is that? You don't even name people first. I left my name books out in the living room again. <laughs> Gotta stop doing that. Okay. Um, but I I don't know. We did, we did what, uh... Uh, a serious tone last series with a, a lot of goofiness kind of interspersed into it. Like where everything, what was it? Our characters took everything seriously, but. But the world was not serious. The world wasn't as serious It'd as that. Yeah, yeah, we were very serious about it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're one yeah. after this is Deimos, right? Yeah, we've got, well, that's going to be coming out this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that um, one's just a spotlight one, right? Is that, that the one you did? That was just a spotlight. Yeah. yeah. Because I was sick. Um, so that's like our one of our abridged uh, yeah. episode okay. formats. Yeah, we just did Thirsty Sword Lesbians was the one right before this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for, I think, like, um, sort of like, like mid-level silly. Yeah, somewhere in the you middle, know? right? Okay. Like, right. Like, so it's Owl not like House, over maybe? the top, like crazy. Owl like, House is a good example of where our nonsense usually falls. It's one of my favorite shows ever. If if I love uh, people that listening show so haven't much. watched Owl House yet, please go watch it. I have not. It I haven't. My kids watched. keep telling me that I need to. Oh yes, um, yes. You both need to. Because mm-hmm. my my sibling came over and watched it with them, and uh, then they were like, "Mom, you have to watch it." It's like okay. it is delightful. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm so sad that it's ending. Mm-hmm. It's one of those. I think there's two seasons, and they're going to do two movies to finish it out. Mm. Yeah. But it's just such an incredible world. So good. So yeah, I think I think like mid level goofy sounds good to me. Doug, what about you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that works for me. All right. Mild All right. absurdity. <laughs> there, there you go. That's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I've seen the contracts and stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess we'll go alphabetically here then. Oh, uh, no. Are we doing like a, a pretend GM that's asking us these questions and we're all trading characters? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're all kind of GMing for each other here. So, Doug, you need, yeah. a, you need a different GM voice that you use. I'll do a very serious GM voice. And what's your GM's name? <laughs> uh, uh, Greg. Greg Masterson. Greg. Because uh, his, his initials GM, are GM. GM, yeah, I like that. That's good. <laughs> Perfect. Uh. I'm Greg Masterson. I'll be your GM today. We're going to play a, a very serious game. I expect that this will be serious, but of course it's up to the players who I expect won't disappoint me. <laughs> Amelia, really we're going to start. We're going to start with you. Our school is called. Um, it's going to be the Williamson Academy of, or should it have a really good acronym? I feel like we need to backronym this. Oh, we got a backronym. We got it? a backronym. Um, it's like a short, like magical word, though, you know, because I don't want to do like magic is like too many letters Oof. to like try yeah. and like. E o o f. Poof. 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 Um, <laughs> uh, prestigious. Mm-hmm. Order. Yeah. Order. Prestigious of, order of. Uh, f- fantastical magic. <laughs> <laughs> Spelled as one word. Yeah. <laughs> fantastical. Uh, fan- fantasticism. <laughs> There, there you go. The prestigious order of fantasticism. Okay, that sounds a little less serious than I was thinking. All right. Come on. I like that Keanu Reeves what? is our GM today. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> oh, that would be a dream. We need <laughs> at least one good whoa out of you before the end. <laughs> okay. Doug, our school is located. Uh, location. Um, I feel like it's located on like a secret island somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm just not sure like how big a body of water. Um, mm. I think like a Great Lake, maybe. Because okay. I feel like the ocean is maybe too much. Like mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. too secluded. Secret island in the middle of a Great Lake? Yeah, I think it's like in the middle of like Lake Erie or something. Erie is good Eerie because is good. it's not like that. Yeah. That's yeah. an Erie word. Yeah. Also, like Michigan is stinky. <laughs> <laughs> and Lake Superior is just way too cold. Mm. All right. Jonathan. Yes. Our head of school is named and is best known for something serious, Jonathan. Uh, their name is Meredith Bleep Blorp. Uh, <laughs> and they're best known because uh, their soul has been transposed into an automaton. And that's why the kids call, call them Bleep Blorp. Because that's the sound that the automaton makes. Now, is Bleep Blorp hyphenated or one word or two separate words? Uh, uh, hyphenated. It's her married name. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Maiden name was Bleep. Yeah, married into the Blorp family. That, that makes sense. Yep. The, the legendary Blorp family. Okay. Ooh, they're very powerful. They're known for their, por their potions and their portions. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just large portions of potions. <laughs> Yeah, jumbo the, portions was their the, slogan. The golden yeah. corral of potion makers. <laughs> Gross. It's an all you can drink potion buffet. Oh <laughs> you don't love the uh, the flame potion fountain. Everybody else comes in files, and theirs comes in like the speedway, like big gulp. <laughs> like the, the like what are those Walmart uh, like the giant mugs, the ones that are yeah. like a small keg. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They're the monster okay. energy drink of portion of potions. <laughs> You'll be I crawling more for days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ryan. Yeah. One of our favorite pastimes is a magical combination of what and what. Oh god. Okay. Serious, Ryan. Serious, yeah, I know. Um has to be um uh, it has to be something that is good. For that, like, competitive anime type mm. uh, moment. Um, so I want to say volleyball. Because okay. <laughs> the other half I wanted to say was a cooking competition. <laughs> a volleyball in a cooking competition. Please, yes. Oh, I'm going to spike these prawns. I was thinking, like, Iron Chef, like... <laughs> It's a magical combination of volleyball and a cooking competition okay. where you have to spike your ingredients literally <laughs> um, into uh, various dishes. And what's it called? Um, let's see. Um, Ready, set, serve. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, that, that's good. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. Only like a little bit. So like a little yeah, bit just a little bit of goofiness. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's fine. All right. Amelia and Doug. Uh, I'd like each of you to give me a notable landmark in the school. Mm. There's a large closet filled with something. What should go in the closet? I want it to be a closet. S tiny statues? I feel like I want it to be something like super mundane. There is mm. a large closet that is filled with singular socks. Um, but if you ever try to go through it, you will notice that it is an ever-changing selection of singular socks. Um, and this closet is the place where all of the lost socks in the world go, at least for a short time, just long enough for people to throw the other sock away. <laughs> <laughs> I have experience with this closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And Doug, what about you? Uh, all right. I feel like the... If it's on a secret island, I think I want the docks to be important in some way. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I want there to be something, like I feel like I want it to be connected to magical transportation in some way, but I haven't gotten mm. my head around that. 
What if it's uh, staffed by like magical sea creatures of some sort? Yep. Yep. It is staffed largely by Octavius. He's an octopus. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, he's, he's the dock master. Mm-hmm. It's not, I mean, it's in a Great Lake, so <laughs> I don't know why there's an octopus there, but it's just fine. a freshwater octopus. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, he's magical. like a humanoid one, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I feel like it's where the local Murph folk send their like teenaged Mur people mm-hmm. to work. They're like, Mur teens. They're Mur teens as valets, um, and so it's just it's real bad. Uh, mm. Yeah, oh, the, Mur- the Mur folk are not great, uh, great folk. I mean, they they never drive any sort of vessels, right? Like they swim, so they're just like forever backing stuff into things. I mean, luckily we can like magically mend oh. stuff, but. Yeah. Yeah, we let the teens be valets for like generations and nobody's quite sure how that started or why we've let that continue. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. um, right. But at this point, it's such a tradition that we can't really back out. It's, it's a good learning experience and they'll be better people. And it's uh, important for them to get college credit. Exactly. Right. And I also feel like that's a way that like the local, like the older mer community um gets the the teenagers to not want to go on land like the mm. little mermaid they're like look at this dumb crap they're driving like right you don't want to be part of that you have a tail you could swim right yep mm-hmm. look at those idiots <laughs> right <laughs> with their boats <laughs> but we have the best sport ever so that would be a draw that's true and i feel like the the merfolk are also like and look at all the problems with socks like why would you want feet Mm, it's true it's true like if you're a mer person you only need the one Mm -hmm. like to keep the bottom of your tail warm right yeah yeah that's just science (laughs) john and ryan yeah the most unconventional one of the most unconventional classes we have at the school is Mm, how about textromancy which is the art of bringing dead books back to life Nobody really knows what that means yet, <laughs> but it's a class that you can take. So it's basically necromancy for books. Yeah. Well, we're just like yeah. slowly rebuilding the Library of Alexandria. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see, that it. makes sense. That sounds very serious. <laughs> That's important work. Uh, but the books talk uh, when they're brought back to life. Yeah. Oh, okay. We haven't figured Darn out how to do it without <laughs> like messing something up. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you know, that knowledge is preserved now. And and that's doing good work in this world. That's the mm-hmm. important thing. Yep. Oh goodness. Um, another unconventional class. Um, <gasps> Ryan, now's your chance for like outfit transformation one on one. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Gosh, how do I want to? How do I want to call that? How can we? How can we? Um, how can we make it more official? Yeah. Uh, it's got to be. Uh. It's got to be like Magical Transformation 101, mm-hmm. right? Something to do with the Emperor's clothing, maybe? Mm. Illusionary. I'm think, like... I'm, I'm, I, want, I want our school to be like the premier jumping off point for all the magical girls of the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, you come to this school uh, specifically if you uh, want to, you know, embrace your, your inner uh, magical girl tropes. Why can't I remember what it's called in... Out, outfit transmogrification. Like, yeah. I think it's like, um, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so bad at words. Well, what's a fancy word for outfit? Right. That's what I'm trying to think of. Like, uh, attire ensemble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ensemble transfiguration. Oh, that, there you go. That sounds more official. Ensemble transfiguration. Cool. All right. Well, we have created our school and, um, you know, I have concerns about the seriousness, but I'm a very serious person. When we get into play, it'll be serious. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I guarantee once we play, it'll be serious. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Don't hold me to that when we get to the fanfic portion. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so is that it for the, the initial world building then? There's, there's one more step. Um, oh, excellent. So what are the systems of power that exist within the world? Um, You should discuss whether your game will feature systematic, uh, systemic oppression. Uh, Oh, you skipped a, you skipped a step. Did I skip a step? Yeah. You have to make rumors. End of page five, the rumors. rumors. You're right. Rumors. 
boy, the designers really should have put that as like a bullet point or a number at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> step e seven instead of do this after step six. Makes it easy to uh -huh. miss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't believe I paid $25 for this book and they didn't do that. <laughs> it's okay, Greg. <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. I could do a better job. I'm going to write them a very long and angry email and make sure every yeah. time they post on social media to let them know how angry I am about this thing. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I'll that's a too. super useful method and I like always gets you the results that you want. It's so sure. fun. Well, it makes sure. me so happy every time. Designers love feedback, so. Yeah. <laughs> they were super looking for your opinion. They were like, man, I wonder what Greg thinks. Everyone wants to know what Greg thinks. <laughs> and they Gosh, all Greg, will. you're so cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, Amelia, uh, go ahead. Give us your first cool rumor. My first cool rumor. Um, Actually, Doug, uh, we have two things here that aren't bullet points. Uh, one piece of this tool's history and then the rumors. Oh. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Either known to be true or a famous rumor and then a rumor about the current goings on at the school. Mm. Okay. So one piece of school history, true or not. Do I have to say whether it's true? <laughs> Mm -mm. Yeah. All right. I um, need to decide. Okay. <laughs> okay, Greg. Um. I have one. If you want me to go. Yeah, go for it. Um, the island was actually transported here from someplace else. Um, and it raised the level of the lake by several feet when it was uh, transported here. Very cool. Some people say there's a sunken town still. <laughs> like along the edge of the lake? Yeah. Uh, it's got to be in Wisconsin somewhere. Wisconsin doesn't border Lake Erie. Oh, uh, never mind. It does in this world. I, think... it does <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're all connected, right? I mean, it's this you island the... from somewhere else. Maybe the island is actually a chunk of Wisconsin that is now in the middle of Lake Erie. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Take that, as Schwabenon. For some reason, I keep thinking of Lake uh, Lake Michigan. I don't know why. Probably because it's right next door. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got to get into eerie uh, mode. Can this island please just be the town of Sheboygan, though? <laughs> yes, no, actually, I think we already made fun of Sheboygan, so we probably shouldn't, like, we already did that in a different episode, but. <laughs> or or Sheboygan. Sheboygan. I have nothing against a boy, uh, Sheboygan. Oh, officially. it's just where all the weird stuff happens. It's like the Florida of Wisconsin. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, so it was somewhere else. Transported here from somewhere else. Hmm. I am going to say that the school a few decades ago had to shut down for one year after they brought back a very dangerous book from the dead. Mm. Uh, nice. That's dark. That's grim. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the school has never won the ready set serve championship uh they've come in second place multiple times mm, to a russian school yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i still have to think of something i'm having such a hard time right now um can we say it always comes in second yeah not <laughs> always some the the best they've done was in second oh yeah never made it all the way to the top rough yeah. rough so they, they get close a lot, but then they always lose out to somebody else. The school is in constant threat of being shut down um, because of, like, tax reasons and, like, eminent domain issues with the Mer people. Not to mention the land that this island originally came from. Mm, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure there's some, like, property dispute. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just homeowners. a big hole in Wisconsin. Right. Yeah, yeah. Did you really like it back, please? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, and now some rumors. Okay, um, I think there's some tension from the Merfolk right now too, and people think they're going to try to take over the school. Cool. The um, okay. So the 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 results of the class projects from the uh, necromancy class, um, are not disposed of as they say they are. Uh, they are actually stored in a hidden, uh, area under the school. Mm. There might be a hidden undead army, uh, <laughs> just under the school. <laughs> what else are you going to do with them? 
I think there's a rumor that Meredith Bleep Blorp's consciousness has been replaced again in the body, but now by someone or something who's impersonating Meredith Bleep Blorp. Oh. That's the rumor. No idea if it's true. Okay. They have been acting weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a rumor that the entirety of last year's senior class actually cheated on the final exams. Um, probably by drinking some Blorp family potions. Okay. And there's a question, obviously, of whether Meredith knew about it. Mm-hmm. And helped them. Blorp's mm. brain juice. Yeah. It'll get you smart. <laughs> It'll smarty <laughs> up. <laughs> Was that to get some more federal funding uh, <laughs> for for the uh, the school because uh, exam scores uh, were were not the greatest? Right. Well, and um, you know the school can't really spare that funding right now because they're in the middle of litigation with the Mer people. Mm-hmm. That's true. And the town uh. of Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> And I don't understand why Meredith can't just give us some of that Blorp family money, but whatever. Yeah, seriously. Come on. It's like she doesn't even care. <laughs> if, if it's even Meredith. Well, that's true. That's probably uh, proof that it's not. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, the old Meredith would have given up some of their money for, uh, for the school. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we talk about systems of oppression. I, I kind of think on a PG show, we just say, like, there's a little bit of, like, simmering tension with the Mer people, but, like... Mm-hmm. We're not going to lean into racism, sexism, classism. Right. Mm-hmm. No, no, I think it's it's much more about like, you know, <laughs> this island was not in the middle of their right. <laughs> of their lake and now it is. Um, yep. It's been that way for a your, while. Get I your assume. island out of my lake. It's, you know, like I said, it's an issue of eminent domain. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's not about who is or is not mer people. It is you put your island in my lake. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's the school like did if, you know, pull the permits for right. a plot of uh, under underwater land um, to build on that land, which mm-hmm. most more folk do. They didn't say what they were going to build, though. Um, and then they just put an island there. Right. So it's on the right plot of land. It's mm-hmm. not taking up more space than they said they were going to. It's just a bit higher than they thought. It's Well, it's, you know, it's blocking the views. And there yeah. are rules on... You know, how tall your islands can be. That's true. This is really a zoning issue. (laughs) That's what it comes down to. This is not about racism. This is a zoning issue. Exactly. Which, well, anyway, that's that's a deep dive into American history. But anyway. Well, Um, right. I was like, we don't need to get into, like, gentrification and, you know. Yeah. An island does not belong here. It's blocking the views. Right. Yep. All right, everybody. Now you're going to select a trope from the playbook. And take the appropriate sheet and then make some trope selections for your character. Their grade, their strengths, their flaws, familiar, and first name. All right. Let's see. Selecting a trope. Yeah, they uh, start towards the back around page Page 82. 82, yeah. My PDF is loading. Reading the file. I think I'm going to go with a haughty descendant, if that's okay with everybody. I'm going to create a character I would never actually want to play in real life, since I'm not going to actually play this character. There's no, it's my favorite part of the show. There are no consequences to your decisions. Uh-huh. Uh, which obviously means that Ryan's going to pick the bullheaded muscle. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so let's see here. They got a loof teacher, a bullheaded muscle, charismatic slacker. I was I was thinking funny plots for mine. Ooh, okay. doting caretaker, famous teacher. So you can you can be adults in this. Mm-hmm. It seems that's cool. Firstborn caster. Ooh, golden child. Okay, Ryan. Yeah. Please help me pick. Okay. Um, haunted survivor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's one of them. So I'm like haunted survivor. It's good. Um, uh, reluctant oracle. Yeah, I just saw that one, too. Withdrawn Bookworm. Ooh, Ooh, that one's good. That one's kind of up your alley, I think. Yeah. There's also Offbeat Eccentric, if we want to, you know, go there. I mean, that's fair. Uh, yeah. what, that's also, like, not far off. What grade set are we thinking? Underclass, upper class, or faculty? I kind of, I think upper class. Okay. Yeah, I think upper class Yeah, like, I think, well. like, we, you know, we're, like, not brand new. We know what we're doing. But, like, we're mm-hmm. not, you know, in charge of anything. Ryan is going to go for Perfect Prefect. 
or Golden Child, or he might go Reliable Bestie. Um, I was looking at all of those and <laughs> internally said no. Um, I don't want to lean that far into my nonsense. What? Mm. I know. Uh, I'm going to be, hmm, let's see. Gosh, this is, there's too many good ones. I know. All right. I'm going to go um, Haunted Survivor. <laughs> what? Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Okay, well, now I feel like I have to, like, I'm going to go with Reliable Bestie. Oh, there you go. Take that. <laughs> My plan worked. Wait, well, we changed it up officially this time for once? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Haunted Survivor. Uh, and you're the Reliable Bestie. And which, which ones were you, Doug and John? Uh, the Haughty Descendant. Yeah, and I am a funny plot. Oh, I have to research what the clumsiest animals are real quick. <laughs> All right. I mean, giraffe is an option. They do seem pretty clumsy. <laughs> I like, yeah, like just like the idea that they're so gangly, you know, that like even if they're uh -huh. not clumsy, they're awkward. Ooh, sloth is real good, too. It seems like a really useless. Oh, yeah. Familiar. Yeah, there's going to be like a miniature sloth, though. Yeah, not like a mega sloth. Right, right. Or maybe it is, and that's part of the problem, is it just constantly wrecks things. Call to action. Yeah, like that. This was probably our most serious character creation ever, and I seriously enjoyed it. So it serious. was so serious. Yeah. Um, this is good fun. I had a <laughs> I, I had a great time making these characters. I wasn't sure how I would feel going into it, mm -hmm. um, just because I think magical school can kind of be like, eh, you know, like like there's the one quintessential magical school that yeah. we want to talk about, and you know, everything else kind of feels like a knockoff of that sometimes mm -hmm. if you don't get it just right. Um, but I had such a great time with this, and like, what a. Uh, I was going to say lovable group, but maybe not. <laughs> most, most of us. I we'll think. see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I th TBD. You'll, you'll see next uh, next episode how, yeah. how lovable most of us are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we let you go for this week, we have a couple calls to action. Yeah. Uh, first up, if you want to help out this show and others on the network, consider the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Um, also, check out our brand new TikTok page at Character Creation Cast on TikTok. Uh, like and subscribe, I guess. Uh, is that what they is that As what the they kids say? say <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe, as the youth say. <laughs> we're not We're not really sure how, how it I, all works. When did we hit that age? Like, when did we hit that age where it was like, I don't know internets it, anymore? Yeah, I mean... I, I've I've seen a slow decline over the last like decade or so. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's been in the last like few years that mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm like, no, it's moving along without me. <laughs> Where's the TikTok going? <laughs> the t the TikTok? What? Yeah. <sighs> so uh, I don't know. I said before, like I may have to finally get one now because I'm like tired of being left out. And, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we're we're gonna have to make some cool, uh, yeah. uh, trendy TikToks. Yeah, maybe if I just stay on our show TikTok, that will yeah. like there you go. force me to make it make yeah, it nice behave. and official and Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> the theoretically so yes, like and subscribe or the whatever. Theoretically it should be worthwhile. Yes. Find us on the TikTok. Next, absolutely please check out the trans rights bundle on itch. Um Ryan has a game in it included along with hundreds of other designers and even more games. It's mm -hmm. like over 400 at this point. Yeah. It is such a good deal at a suggested price of $5 mm -hmm. or more. Um, and it really helps kids that are suffering down in Texas right now after some damaging anti-trans legislation that was recently passed. Um, it's a great cause and an absurd amount of games for that cost. Um, so please check that out. Consider giving more than the minimum amount if you can in order to help some people out and just get a boatload of games that you have to sift through. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's so many good ones in there. Uh, Thirsty Sword Lesbians is in there. Wander mm -hmm. Home. Uh, gosh, the, too many Yeah, there's games. some big games. And I always am surprised at like the number of like bigger recognizable games too, that it's not just mm -hmm. people's like one page homebrew kind of stuff, that there's, exactly. there's a lot of bigger games in mm -hmm. there too. 
yeah, it's it's really great. Uh, absolutely check it out, and it goes towards a, a really wonderful cause. And if you have some time after all of that, uh, consider leaving a rating and review for our podcast. Um, the pandemic has been pretty hard for listener numbers for quite a lot of podcasts out there, this one included. It and made me kind of sad. I'm, I'm going to be honest with everybody listening. Like, when we looked at the numbers yeah. and compared them, it was like, oh, but we've... I, I like what we're putting out. I know. <laughs> Please listen to it. We, we, but I know that I, I have, because I'm not on a commute anymore, I have mostly stopped listening to podcasts. I just don't mm-hmm. have the, the time to do it that I did before. Yeah. Um, so I totally get it. But but also help. <laughs> don't stop listening to mine. <laughs> I'm finding I'm listening to about half of what I used to. Yeah, um, yeah. And it, it's hard to squeak in a couple of minutes here and there to, to actually uh, listen Uh, since I literally do not commute anymore either. Um, But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been rough for our numbers. Um, We were doing, we were doing pretty well. We were upward trending and then the pandemic hit and then everything just kind of went downhill from there. But um, we understand that good reviews is one of the best ways to spread the word uh, Mm -hmm. and get new listeners to our feed. So if you can head over to Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, podcast addict or wherever you can leave reviews for for podcasts if we can find it uh we will read out every five star review right here and not only will it help us out but it'll make us feel pretty amazing as well uh Mm -hmm. and then we get to thank you personally like we're about to do for this review we got from hawk lord 2112 they said so i've been on a ccc kick for a while Ryan and Amelia have such an engaging chemistry and work so well with the game creators slash enthusiasts they have on the show. They look at the mechanisms built into the various games without deep diving all the crunch, giving a wonderful insight into whatever system they are discussing. They genuinely enjoy the work they do and their approach of, we can make what is fun to make and what sounds like fun to play because there are no consequences of bad decisions. (laughs) (laughs) Has me <laughs> snorting with laughter on the bus on many occasions. Oh, us too. <laughs> uh-huh. Us too. <laughs> if you are after a snapshot of Game X that you've been seeing on, on Twitter, bought on itch, and haven't gotten around to reading yet, and want to be entertained and get some insight from the game's creators and fans, take a listen. Find whichever series has a system you know or are interested in and stick it in your ears. You won't regret it. Oh, thank you. That was, that was so review. nice. Thank you. That was such a, thank you. We also enjoy not suffering the consequences <laughs> of our decisions. I I honestly love how much it has freed me up to do things mm-hmm. that like weren't and I honestly I think you especially because you were very prone to like making the ideal mechanical decision. Oh yeah. Um much more than I was. And I, I think you've really branched out and been like no, this looks cool now. Like, exactly. <laughs> I don't have to, you know. There's something to be said for feeling. And I, f- I honestly think it has changed how I make regular characters, mm-hmm. too, because I've started to do a little bit of like, you know what? That sounds fun. Yeah. It may not be ideal later on, but like, pff, let's go with it yeah. and see what happens. A- you and know? honestly, uh, sometimes I've actually uh, done the unideal thing on purpose just because it was, you know, a garbage decision. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, there's something really freeing about being able to say, I do what I want. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, thank you so much for that review, yes, Hawk Lord. Thank that, you. Was, uh, that was so good. That was awesome. Well, that is it for today's episode. You can come back next week as we dive fully into our character creation and make some truly amazing but very serious characters. Very serious. Very serious, um, lovable, very serious characters. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, take care of yourselves, everyone. Drink some water, get some rest, get vaccinated. Stay safe out there and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. 
head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like A Horror Borealis. A Horror Borealis is an actual play Monster of the Week podcast set in the 1990s in the fictional town of Revenant, Alaska, just south of the nation's least visited national park and way north of everything else. A reclusive small game hunter with a magical secret, a young anarchist librarian with a passion for conspiracy theory, and a sensible park ranger with a strong local book club following find themselves pulled together by common threads woven mysteriously into their past when monsters begin plaguing their tiny community. But they soon discover the things they're fighting run much deeper and much closer to home. Tune in for a story about identity, empathy, community, mental illness, and healing, and stay for the beloved local diner.